if you would go again, we're going to uh, Mark chapter 5. We're going to read verses 35 through 36. I'm coming from the English Standard uh, Version. While he was yet, while he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Don't fear, only believe. Oh, y'all didn't y'all didn't hear that this morning. So let me read verse 36 again that somebody might catch this. But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, what he said, he said, what? Don't, do not fear and only believe. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your kindness. We appreciate you for all that you are. You are absolutely amazing, oh God. We ask in the next few moments that you be with us supernaturally to give a word to your people, oh God, that they may understand that they're in a believing moment right now, oh God. We lift you up and give you praise because we know you've already met us and you're getting ready to take us higher. Somebody say higher. We give you that praise and honor that's due unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a seat here in the presence of our Lord and Savior this morning. We are continuing on in what was just called an impromptu series God gave me titled Believing Moments. Last week, we dealt with believing moments in, in, re, in reference to desperation. Today, I want to talk about believing moments in reference to fear. Someone say fear. Fear is a natural emotion that is triggered by a perceived threat. It, it, it's basically uh, uh, being, it's a basic tool for survival, and our bodies respond to the potential dangers with a, mind, a response of either fight or flight. As essential as fear may seem, to be living with it constantly often causes great damage, consequences, and struggles that, it, that uh, uh, take place that may be even greater than the original threat that you may have ran into. Some of the impacts of living with constant fear is physical health deterioration, such as a weak immune system. Increased aging process. How many of us want to die old, want to old, get, uh, get old quick? None of us want to get old quick? Nobody signed up for that ticket? Well, well, fear will cause you to age quicker than what you want it to. It decreases fertility. It increases fatigue. It causes clinical depression and many other physical health symptoms. Not only does chronic fear impact your physical health, it impacts your memory. Someone say memory. Uh, your memory can be impaired long term and, and, and it can work on what is called your hippocampus your hippocampus can i use a medical term today well what some of y'all might be asking what is your hippocampus your hippocampus is found in your cortex which is a part of the brain that regulates your emotions okay i'm going somewhere in other words fear can impact your hippocampus in a way that your your motivation becomes unregulated your emotions become unregulated your learning becomes unregulated and your memory gets impacted as well your decision making can can be uh, take the the path of more negative consequences with that coming from your decisions in other words constantly walking and living in fear causes you to be in a place to where you're unregulated because scientifically and medically, there's a part of your brain that's being impacted by your inability to overcome fear. And the longer you live in fear, the more that this area begins to strengthen or develop pathways that are responding to fear, which means you can see something and, and two people can see the same thing in one has a, a mindset that they're not afraid, and another has a mindset that they're totally in fear. Oh, just throw a bug around some of y'all. Some of y'all will jump up right now, and it won't be because of the Holy Ghost. Oh, another person would look at that bug, put it in a paper towel, and go about their business. Oh, okay. Some of y'all love heights like me. Some of y'all are never jumping out of an airplane. Oh, okay, can I talk to you this morning? All right, and while there's some fear that can be healthy, oftentimes constant fear, living in constant fear, can often cause you to be in a limited belief system 
can impact you mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. They say there's three ways to overcome or strengthen your, your, uh, uh, your hippocampus, in other words, to impact that fear component. Three ways. Everyone say exercise, change your diet, and brain training. You can either exercise, or what if I told you the reason why you're so fearful in some areas is because you're just not getting enough oxygen to your brain. If you exercise, you feel better about yourself and confidence would breed, uh, and then you would be less fearful in some areas that you, what if I told you that some of the stuff you eat actually cause you to become more anxious and more fearful? Oh, I'm trying to help y'all this morning. But I didn't come to talk about your exercise or your diet. We can save that for another time. But I want to deal with that other one where you can strengthen your hippocampus, in other words, to decrease your fear and strengthen your confidence or your belief system, and that's the brain training. Now, now, there's multiple brain training. You can work on a puzzle or some kind of app you can get. But I want to talk about the brain training that is biblically related because I believe if you learn to re oh, 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 there's a scripture that says be renewed by the, okay, yeah, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, your brain has to be retrained because some of us are walking in areas of fear because our brain has been brainwashed into being fearful on things that we see in encounter. I want to deal with this reality because if you're going to maximize your believing moment, because for some of y'all, you're in a season that God is going to open up some things and you got just a moment to step out on faith before you miss it. You, uh, I'm trying to help y'all. You, you're going to have some times that you run into situations and if fear is strong enough, it will cause you to miss your moment because the moment requires belief. You must believe, and that's the context of what we're dealing with today, is the young, the ruler of the synagogue named Jairus. Now, I don't have time to go back to last week's message, but I encourage you, if you have not had the opportunity to watch it, it is in direct connection to what I'm talking about today. So I don't want to digress too far, but understand, Jairus is a ruler of the synagogue. He's one of the leaders of the church. His, his job was to make sure that worship was perfected and that everything that was in place for how they worship and connected with God, that was his job. His daughter got sick. He made the decision that he was going to go and look for Jesus so that Jesus could come to his house and heal his daughter. And while he is coming to Jesus, Jesus runs into some situations that we're going to dig deep into. But here we have a, a, a man that has just a moment to go use belief to bring about the possible change in his daughter. Thank you, Jesus. And some of us only have a moment to believe God. Ooh, you, don't always got, you don't always got a year to believe God. You might just have a moment. Oh, there, things can change in a moment. Anybody ever experienced something change your life in just a moment? Oh, uh, you were good until one thing happened, and in a moment everything switched in you, or things were going bad, but something happened in a pivotal moment, and it turned everything upside down. I need you to understand that God is saying to us in the spirit that there are going to come some believing moments. And if you're too desperate, you may miss your moment to believe. Or if you're too fearful in today's context, in today's message, you may miss your moment to believe because Jairus was dealing with the situation in which he runs into Jesus and he finally gets Jesus. He says, come, my daughter is sick. Come to my house that you may heal her. And so he begins to walk with him. And while he's walking, at the same time, somebody else is having a moment. I talked about this last week. The woman with the issue of blood had her moment. She said, "If I, in this moment, if I only touch the hem of his garment, I can be made whole. This was her believing moment. So her believing moment caused her to be made whole. But the challenge was is that Jesus stopped on his way to go help Jairus. He stopped and said, who touched me? He began to look around. The Bible says he began to look around and seek out who touched him. And so here it is. He's seeking out the woman with the issue of blood, and then he begins to engage in a conversation with her. And she tells the whole story of what has happened and how she had been sick and how she had spent all her money, and then she just came to touch his, his him. And they're having this conversation, and the Scripture says, while he was talking to the woman with the issue of blood, some people from Jairus' house 
came to him and told him, listen, your daughter's no longer sick. She's dead. Don't trouble the teacher anymore. Oh, can't, isn't it difficult sometimes while you're waiting on God to move and God is, is, is saying that I'm going to bless you. And then while you're waiting, things get worse than they were before somebody said when it rains it. Oh, OK, y'all know that that ain't Bible, but y'all sure know it. All right. Uh, 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 and that's the situation that Jairus is in is that he is. Oh, man, I finally got a chance to get Jesus to come. But before I get a chance to get there, he's stopping and talking to this woman. And, and, and yeah, cool, but I need my daughter to be healed. It's cool that you healed her, but I need my daughter to be healed. And sometimes we feel that way. It's great that you're blessing them, but Lord, I need you to bless me. It's great that you're moving for them, but Lord, I need you to move for me. Uh, great is, Lord, you open up doors for them, but my doors are closing instead of opening. So imagine the emotions Jairus could have or was happening with the reality that not only did Jesus stop and talk, which took away time. Woo, geez, I'm preaching right now. It took away time that was essential to get back to his daughter. He needed every minute, every second to get back to his daughter while she was still sick because he believed that the sickness was unto death. That's why he left his daughter in the first place because he believed if I don't get to Jesus, she's going to die. Oh, we've tried everything else, and she's so sick that I got to go to the healer. Oh, Jesus. Oh, so I got to go seek the healer. Uh, check this out. Side note, you got to be careful who you see Jesus to be. Because if you see him only as a healer, then you might, you might miss the fact that he's a resurrector. Y'all ain't heard that, but I ain't got time today. I ain't got time today. Be careful who you perceive God to be. And tell your neighbor, don't put God in the box. Yeah, yeah. The song today says, I am who I say I am. God, God didn't say I was a healer. He says I can work miracles. Oh, oh, you notice the word. If you got time, go do a study in John where Jesus tells you who he is. Seven times he tells you who he is. I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection. Uh, uh, yeah, go, go look at that. So in other words, what I'm saying today, this ain't even part of my message, but this going to bless some of y'all. Don't say God is something that he's not. Repeat what God says he is. When God says, I am the Lord, the God, that I have authority over all things, then that's what you speak. You don't put God in a box, but that's a different message. Y'all come back some other time. I might preach that. Let me get back to where I need to be. So, so, so here's Jairus in a situation where he, when he left his daughter, his daughter was sleeping. I mean, it was sick. It was sick unto death. When he got to Jesus, he let him know, that my daughter is sick unto death. She's about to die, and I need you to come quickly. And in the middle of Jesus coming to his house, Jesus is delayed. He is sits there, and, and he's healed by, he heals a woman. And he goes, and not only does he say, hey, woman, you know, great. He, he stops and finds out who, who it is, and he engages in a conversation. Hold on, wait a minute, God. I know you're talking, and I need you to talk to my situation. Anybody ever felt that way? You're talking to their situation, but I need you to talk to my situation. And then while I'm waiting on you to get done blessing them, while, while I'm on the altar in line and I'm waiting for my healing and my deliverance, they come tell me some bad news that my situation just got worse. And then what I love about the text, the Lord blessed me on this, it says, while they were talking, Jesus overheard what they were saying. And then he looked at and talked to Jairus and said, don't fear, do not fear, only see. Now, this, this messes me up right here because I can just imagine the situation. Here it is. Jesus is talking to the woman to issue blood over here. And then here, Jairus is way over here talking about, hey, you know, uh, 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 you know oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. And then they come tell him, uh, your daughter's dead. And here's Jesus over here. Y'all ain't caught this. I'm going to give you my points. But some of y'all that can catch this in the spirit going to get blessed because this ought to bless you. Uh, while they talking, Jesus is saying, the woman, you are here to your faith. They talking over here, uh, don't fear, only believe. Y'all not hearing me. Uh, that's the context of what's going on. And Jesus says this. Why does Jesus say this? Because he never said that he was afraid. He never, we don't see evidence that, that Jairus was afraid, but, but, but Jesus understood that that was a believing moment. And in that moment, he has a decision to make like many of us. Because again, I told you, thank you, Holy Ghost, that fear is a, a reflective response to fear. 
fight, uh, to either go and fight or flight. Fear automatically can happen when there's a threat or a danger that you perceive. So Jesus tells, tells him in that moment, don't fear, believe. Oh, Jesus, y'all ain't got that. That's all right. I'll, I'll let you preach and shout here in a little bit. But, but in that moment, he was telling him that this is your believing moment. Do you know that the scripture, out of all the commands in the scripture, there are more commands about not fearing God and not being afraid of God than any other commands in the Bible? That, that can I suggest you in Joshua 1 and 9, um, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou go. Isaiah 41, 10, fear thou not, for I am with thee, nor be dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with my right hand of my righteousness. Psalms 21, 27, 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I Fear, the Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy Y'all not hearing me. Uh, 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, all fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a do you know more commands in the Bible talk about not fearing and not being afraid? Uh, there are more commandments than any other commandment in the Bible. God commands us not to be afraid and not to fear. There's a reason why God says it so many times, because he understands what fear can do to your belief system. He knows fear can close up blessings. Oh, but believing can open up blessings. Who need a, believe, need a blessing this morning? Begin to have faith in God right now. Oh. Oh, in your believing moment, you need to understand that fear is a dangerous tool that can work against you. It will cause you to be paralyzed. Ooh, some of y'all haven't talked to that family member because you're afraid of what they may say. Oh, but you need to deal with it because they did something they shouldn't have done to you or they impacted you or said something they shouldn't have said. And in order for you to get over your things in life, you're going to have to face your, okay, Okay, some of y'all ain't started that business. I don't know why I keep saying it. I think I've been using the word business for the last three weeks. Some of y'all ain't started that business because you are afraid. You're fearful of what may happen if you stepped out on faith. Oh, that's powerful right there. You're, you're afraid of what may happen if you stepped out on faith. That don't even make sense, do it? You are afraid of what may happen if you stepped out on faith. But as believers, we must always walk by faith and not by sight, which means I cannot walk by fear, in other words. Thank you, Jesus. And the situation that we have today is that we have too many fearful people. We're afraid to let ourselves love again. We're Afraid to put ourselves out there again. We're afraid that people, what people may think of us. We're afraid of what may happen to us. So we live life off of fear. And when you live life constantly in fear, it does something to you mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. When you live life where you don't have faith, when you don't believe, you will often miss the moments God has for you. But who in here is saying, I'm tired of fear, I'm about to walk by faith? Who in here says that I'm not going to miss my believing moment? This is my moment to believe God and take him at his word. This is my moment to stand on his truth. This is my moment to not turn around. I'm not backing up this time. Oh, you bully fear, I got something for you, and that's the sword of the spirit. Oh, which is the word of God that is able to stop all those attacks of the enemy. Hey, I'm no longer on the defense. I'm getting on the offense in my life. I'm about to go forward and not backwards. Oh, put this thing in overdrive. I got time to make up. Oh, I got this is my believing moment. Somebody give God some praise. Woo. This is my believing moment. I don't know who is getting blessed this moment, but this is by the Spirit of God. Receive this prophetical word. This is your believing moment. I don't care what it looks like. Yes, it could be dead, but God says do not fear, only believe, which means there's no other option, no plan B. Oh, tell your neighbor no more plan Bs. 
Oh, my, my plan A is, fe- is faith and faith alone. My plan A is believing God and believing God alone. I'm believing God for my health. I'm believing God for my wealth. I'm believing God for my marriage. I'm believing God for my children. I'm believing God for my mind. I'm believing God for my heart. Oh, this is my believing moment. This is my believing moment. Y'all chill out. I got to, I got to give y'all my text. You know y'all want your three or four points. Let me get to them. This is my believing moment. Oh, but you're going to have to deal with the fear that exists in your life. You can't ignore the fear anymore. You can't dismiss the fear anymore. Stop making excuses for your fear. This is just the way I am. This is just my personality. The devil is a lie. It's what you're making yourself to be. You don't have to be afraid. You choose to be afraid. And the more you reinforce fear, then what happens? It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because in your mind, again, going back to that hippocampus, when you, when you live life in fear, then what happens is that it gets reinforced in the brain. So now you only draw from memories of fear, which is why when you see something, you say it's fearful, and you think that's wisdom to be fearful of it. But no, it's not wisdom. It's just that you've reinforced it with the memories that are stored in your brain because their fear has caused negative memories to be stored there. So the only options you can see mentally and envision are fearful options. Oh, I'm trying to help y'all this morning. So now your A, B, C, and D visions all scream something from a fearful perspective. But only a God, I'm trying to retrain your brain today, because it takes God and his spirit and his word to help develop some alternate pathways in your brain. Oh, some alternate options, because uh, let's look at it like this. Let, you know what? Let me go to my text, and then hopefully I'll come back to this and bless y'all. But this is how you overcome fear. First thing you do is you don't fear delays. You don't fear delays. Again, I told you that they were walking to Jairus' house. The woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus' him, and it stopped Jesus from going to his house. Oh, Jesus, I'm helping somebody. I'm helping you just say, Lord, Jesus, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so here's the situation that Jairus' opportunity to save his, oh, God, thank you. His opportunity to save his daughter has been delayed. Jesus agreed that he would go save his daughter. And that promise is being delayed. Oh, I'm trying to help. Somebody going to catch this. It is, it can be difficult when you know God promised you something and it's delayed. It can be difficult when you know you heard from God. You know God said it. And you had confidence in God. You had enough belief to walk with him. Oh, Jesus. Oh, but do you not have enough belief to believe him when he delays? Because it can be almost unbearable when God delays his promises. And in those moments, you can become fearful. Mm, Jesus. You can become afraid because God is not moving as fast as you wanted him to. God is not doing, but I need you to understand, just because, just because, check this out. Jesus is saying, woman, thy faith has made thee whole. He's overhearing what they're saying, and he says, do not fear, only believe. Catch this. He's talking to the woman, but he's still listening. Y'all ain't got this. He's talking to the woman, but he's still listening. He's delayed, but he's not distracted. What if I told you today, just because God is delayed doesn't mean he's distracted. Oh, just because God is not is might be behind, he's still on time. Woo. I'm trying to help you. Don't fear delays. Don't fear delays because delays don't mean God's distracted. It just means God is working out a plan on his appointed time. Jesus never moved at nobody else's speed. Ooh. Which means it don't matter how desperate you are last week and how fearful you are this week. God, if he said it, he's still going to do it. They're going to do it. Don't fear delays. 
Oh, don't fear for delays because delays don't mean that God is distracted. If that's blessing, you say amen. Um, I need you to understand this. Check this out. Habakkuk 2, 3. Check this out. This is going to bless somebody's soul right now. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not, uh, not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Hold on, wait a minute. Habakkuk chapter 2, 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Side note, let me bless some of y'all. Do you know that your, that your vision God has for your life, the calling God has for your life, what you see has an appointment with your destiny? Oh, that ought to bless somebody right there. The vision on your life got an appointment with your destiny. Oh, it already scheduled in advance an appointment. Oh, that ought to bless somebody, which means that though the vision ain't happened yet, it's got an appointment with destiny, which means it's going to come about at some point in time. Somebody praise God. Woo, Jesus, I'm here to bless you this morning. I'm here to bless you. So, so though the vision is for an appointed time, it's scheduled in my destiny, it, it, it put its calendar invite. Somebody tell your neighbor, accept the calendar invite. Oh, some of y'all don't like to accept calendar invites. But them calendar invites get scheduled out your destiny. Oh, I ain't got time today. I ain't got time today. I got to stay on time. I got just a few minutes left. Let me get keep moving here. Uh, so the vision is for yet an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Do you know your, your vision got a voice? Oh, do you know your vision will talk? At the end, do you know your vision going to speak loud and clear? And the Bible says that your vision not going to lie. Oh, it's going to tell the truth. God was with me the whole time. Y'all look natty, natty, boo, boo. Y'all thought that y'all had me, but I won in the end. Oh, Jesus, I need you to understand the calling on your life, the purpose on your life. What God said, it's going to speak at the end. It might not be talking right now, but that's okay because fools talk the whole time. Woo. Wise people know when to talk. Oh, Jesus, I'm trying to bless you. So the scripture says that the, the vision, though it is for an appointed time, it shall speak and it shall not lie. But this is what messes me up. It says, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Hold on, wait a minute. Because the tarry, both here, are two words that, can mean, that mean delay. So it says, though the vision is delayed, it will surely come to pass, and it will not be delayed. Hold on, what are you saying to me, Jesus, because I'm confused. You said, though it's delayed, it will surely come to pass, and it will not be delayed. Hold on, wait a minute. Either you're delayed or you're not. Right? Don't that make common sense? Either you're delayed or you're not. Either you're, if, if, how can you be delayed and not be delayed? You are delayed. You can't tell me you did, that you're going to be late and on time. How are you going to be late and on time? Either you on time or you late. Stop messing with my emotions. But, but the scripture says that, that, that though it delay, it shall not be delayed. See, because in the English, we don't get the, the Hebrew words here. But there's two Hebrew words that are working here. The first one is me, hey. Everyone say me, hey. That's the first terrier delayed. This delay means that it's delayed, but it's delayed in a way that it could potentially produce questions, hesitancy, and relenting what he told you to do, or reluctant in stepping out on faith. Oh, Jesus, I'm trying to bless you. So, so, so I suggest to you the first delay here is more dealing with you than with God. Because the second delay, check this out. It says it, it is uh, a hair, which means they won't say a, a hair. A hair, like you got a hair. All right? It means to be behind or delayed. So wait a minute. Though it's delayed, it shall not be delayed. It shall not be behind. Oh, y'all ain't got that. So, so the first one is delay, though it may take a certain amount of time that causes you to potentially question God. It shall not be behind because the other one is dealing with God because God is never behind what he said he's going to do. If he gave the vision, it may be delayed for you, but it ain't behind for God. Oh, it may be hesitant for you, but it is right on time for God. What I'm trying to tell you this morning is do not fear delays. Don't fear delays. When you fear the fact that things have been delayed in your life, and you're missing your believing moment. But when things are delayed, you ought to shout because delay doesn't mean disposed of. Uh, a delay just simply means delay. 
That means that it may not come when you want him, but he'll be there. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He's on time. Okay, we ain't got time for that. We ain't got time. We ain't got time. We ain't got time. All right, next, next one. Don't fear facts. I want to say don't fear facts. Here's the fact. They came to him and said, your daughter is dead. She stopped breathing. The fact is, she's dead. So don't bother, the te- don't trouble the teacher. Why should you trouble the teacher any further? The problem I need you to understand sometimes, when you fear facts, you will stop bothering the teacher. I'm preaching today for real. When, 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 when you only pay attention to facts, you will stop bothering the teacher. And we all know who the teacher in the room is. It ain't me. It's Jesus. You can't fear facts because that will cause you to stop praying what you have in faith in. That's going to stop, will cause you to stop believing. And once you stop believing, then why do I need to continue to have a conversation with God any further on it? If I no longer believe God's going to do it, why do I need to talk to him about it? Let me pray about something else. But you can't fear facts. Because facts, same thing as truth. Woo! Oh, I'm blessing y'all today. Oh, I'm messing up your life today. Facts are not the same thing as truth. Because the fact is, the girl was dead. Oh, I'm going to skip ahead to next week. Jesus says she ain't dead, she's sleeping. Now, everything indicates that she's dead. She's not breathing. She's not responding. Her eyes are dilated in a way that means she's gone. She's lost all activity in her limbs. There is no brain frequency. The fact is that she's dead. But there's a difference between facts and truth because nowhere in Scripture did it say Jesus was the facts. Matter of fact, all I found is Jesus says, I am the way, the truth. Oh, which means the fact is it can look like it's dead, but the truth is death is a permanent thing, a a temporary thing for God. Oh, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care. The fact is, yeah, you don't have the money. Yeah, yeah, the fact is, you don't have the time. The fact is, you don't have the degree. The fact is, you have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. The fact is, you are not capable. But the truth is, you serve a God that has authority over all your facts. That's why I don't fear facts. Because facts, do you know facts are subject to change? Truth never changes. Oh, I'm about to bless somebody. The facts can be one thing today and the next thing the next day. The fact is, you can be broke today. The truth is, with Jesus, you're never broke because God has unlimited resources. But you got to know when it's your believing moment because some people will be broke today and wealthy the next day because they believe God. Oh, somebody is sick today and they're delivered the next day. Somebody's about to give up in this moment, but now they give in to God. I need you to understand that you don't fear facts. Someone say, don't fear facts. Jesus. Oh, don't fear. Don't fear delays. Don't fear facts. I got one more for you. Jesus. Oh, man, all that facts didn't mess me up. Facts are not final. Truth is eternal. Oh, that's my draw. That's a my draw. Facts are not final. Tell your neighbor, facts are not final. Truth is eternal. I ain't got time to go back because I got to get out of here, but I need y'all to catch that. The last one is don't fear believing. Yeah, yeah, that don't even sound like a good sentence, do it? Yeah, my wife would get all on me right now because you ain't speaking good English. But don't fear believing because for some of us, we may not be afraid of the situation anymore, we may not be convicted in believing it. Because facts have presented themselves. So while Jairus believed, see, check this out. Jairus may have believed Jesus to heal her, but because he believed he was a healer, he may not have believed her, him to raise her from the dead. You may believe God for the smaller challenges in your life, but you don't necessarily believe God for the, the challenges. 
But, but I want to challenge you today, don't fear believing. Don't fear putting things in God's hand. Because if you believe, uh, take this out, Jairus. Somebody going to catch this. If you believe Jairus enough to leave your daughter who is sick, sick, knowing you may never see her again, to go find Jesus, woo, if you believe God enough to do that, then you believe God enough to ask, you were bold enough to ask him, oh, you believe God enough to not just get there but to talk up for yourself, and then you believe God enough to walk with him. Uh, if you can believe all that time, why can't you believe, even though you got a negative report, that God is still the final say? Oh, don't fear believing. The Lord gave me years ago, he said, what is the worst thing that could happen, you believing me? What is the worst thing that could happen to you stepping out on faith in Jesus? What is the worst thing that could happen when you ain't got no other options anyways? What is the worst thing that could happen by you speaking faith? Oh, Jesus, I'm trying to help some of y'all. But some of y'all have been, your belief has been taken from you. You believe God for certain things, but you don't believe him for everything. You believe him for the small things, but you don't believe him for the serious things. Because the serious things have been delayed. The serious things have delays and facts that are speaking against why you should believe. But if you know that this is your moment of belief, I need you to understand that your faith is greater than the facts. Your faith is greater than the delays. Your faith is greater than the situation. If you're willing to believe and not have fear, do not fear. Only what? Believe. Only believe. Only believe. There is no other option if you're going to walk in that moment of belief. There is no other option but to trust God. There is no other option but to stand on his word. There is no other option to say, God, for you I live and for you I die. There is no other option to say, Lord, I put my marriage before you. Lord, I put my house before you. Lord, I put my children before you. Lord, I put my job before you. There is no other opportunity other than to believe God in this moment. I need you to understand, don't fear only believe who's gonna believe God in this place I'm gonna believe God sometimes that's all I got is my belief I don't have enough money to make it happen I don't have enough time to make it happen I don't know the right people to make it happen oh I need him to be a lawyer in my courtroom y'all ain't heard me I need him to be my doctor at the hospital Oh, I need him to be my security guard that I walk through the shadow of the valley of death so I can't fear no evil, for thou art with me. In other words, that means God was a security guard. How do I know he had his rod and his staff? Oh, his rod and his staff, which means he had one thing to kind of pull things together and, a, a, and another object to hit things away. Oh, I need God to be my security guard. Anybody need God to be, my, be your security guard? I need God to be my security guard in this place. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to believe, challenge you to understand that this is your believing moment. For some of y'all, this is your moment to believe. You can't allow fear to creep in while you're believing. You can't do both at the same time. Oh, Jesus. You can't be so afraid that you're paralyzed. You got to speak faith and believe faith and act on faith. Check this out. Last thing I got, I'm going to get out of here. This is why you have to believe and not fear to overcome it because some of y'all don't understand that your acts of faith have built a deposit. Say that again. Your acts of faith at building deposit have been building deposits. Some of you, it was faith to come in this building today. Let me say that again. For some of you, it was faith to get up this morning and say, you know what, I'm going to praise God in the sanctuary. Oh, for some of you, it was faith for you to get up yesterday when you felt like everything was over. Oh, you've been fighting fear. You've been fighting being alone. You've been fighting being discouraged. You've been fighting all kind of things, and for some of y'all, but I need you to understand every day that you got up and said, thank you, Jesus, was an act of faith. Ooh. Don't take it for granted that your, the, 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 there's a song, is my living in vain? Is my praying in vain? Is my preaching and my teaching in vain? Then they say, no, 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 of course not. It's not in vain. Oh, y'all not hearing me, because up the road is a 
Turtle Gang. Y'all ain't heard that song. Oh, can I put it another way? Um, she, the, the, Jairus' uh, 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 daughter is not dead. She sleep. She sleep. In a moment of a twinkle of an eye, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Didn't it just say in a moment? I, then I'm talking about believing moments today. In a moment, you can be changed. In the moment, things can turn around. In the moment, things can be different. But you've got to believe. Somebody say, I got to believe. Let us stand. Somebody give God some praise in this place. If he blessed your soul. This is believing moments for some of us. Oh, this is a believing moment. Don't miss your moment to believe God. Don't allow fear overtake you where you miss. God wants to can and should do your life. Oh, I'm not encouraging foolishness. I am encouraging faith. Oh, I like that. I'm going to say that one more time. I'm not encouraging foolishness, but I am encouraging faith. We operate in a different system. The Bible says we are in the world, but we are not of the world which means I cannot function like the world does and expect God to show up. The world operates out of fear. I was talking to a brother of mine the other day and we, we were discussing. He said something that was a mic drop. He said people live off of what they're full of. People respond and act and live off of what they're full of. And when society is nothing but fear, you get now you begin to live off of what you're full of. Then I add something the Lord gave me a long time ago. A fool makes sense if you listen to him. A fool will start to make sense if you listen to him long enough. You got to be careful what you digest. I'm not saying be foolish, but, but there's a lot of stuff that you you allowing to come into your hippocampus. That's storing certain memories down certain pathways that is causing you to be unable to believe. But be not conformed to the ways of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you know. Which means I got to, my mind's got to be renewed. There's some areas that, let's be honest, there's some areas we have fear in that this is the moment to allow God to begin to transform us and build new thinking in us. Ooh, Jesus. So that we no longer walk in the limitations of fear. But we walk in the freedom of faith. 